Hi guys, I hope you're doing well today. Today I am filming this video to show you how I make mushroom mugs. I'm going to make a little mushroom mug with a lid and it's going to be great. It's going to be so fun. So I hope you stick around. The tools we'll use today is a wire cutter, a wood tool, a sponge, a caliper, and a bowl of water. So let's go ahead and get started. So this clay body that I use is a cone six porcelain clay body and I decided to reclaim clay this month mainly because clay is very expensive and gas is very expensive <laughs> and we buy our clay from Charlotte and I did not feel like driving up to Charlotte um, and buying clay that was just not really in the cars for us <laughs> right now so basically what I did and it's actually the previous video you can check it out if you want um, I reclaimed clay and with reclaiming clay is super easy super fun um, but you have to slick it down and then blend it by using a blender and just make sure there's no lumps in it and one of the issues that I have with this porcelain clay is that when you slick it down it doesn't really get as slate down as it could be because the particles are so close together in porcelain um, so sometimes I have issues with the clay body when I slick it down and then put it on a plaster bat to dry out and when I wedge it I don't really feel it but once I start throwing I feel it and so in this video there'll be moments where <clears throat> I have a hard time centering um, mainly because there's like either air bubbles or there's something going on with um, a chunk of the clay being a bit harder than what it should be. So either way, um, I do struggle through it, but <laughs> it gets there. So right now what I'm doing is something called centering. I'm just making sure the clay body is centered on the pottery wheel. And now I'm opening the clay and compressing the bottom. You can press the bottom so that you don't get cracks or S cracks or anything like that. And I like to just kind of clean it up and then go back in with some water. Now, as you see, I'm starting to pull up and there is a wobble in the clay body, mainly because I actually pulled up a little too hard. And right now I'm just trying to, trying to get it back centered just to make sure that when I start throwing again, it wouldn't be too much of a wobble. And this is actually kind of kind of interesting because when I started off at the beginning, um, it was really good. Like the clay, the clay cup seemed fine, but then once I started working with it, I was like, "Ooh, something's going on." Um, and I actually was able to save it. Like I didn't have to uh, rewedge it and start over. So that was super cool. And I don't really know exactly what I did to resave it now that I'm looking at the video as I'm doing this voiceover. I think what I did is that I just made sure to kind of like compress as I threw or throw <laughs> as I pulled up the walls. And you can see it's pretty much off centered. Um, and this is me trying to poke out any air bubbles that I feel. Um, and this is actually my fault. I could have wedged longer and I should have wedged longer so that's just one of the perks of buying clay when you buy clay it's usually de-aired so they put it through something called a pug mill and they extract the oxygen bubbles out of it I think that's how you say it or they just compact it to the point where all the particles of the clay bodies are very close together so there's hardly any air bubbles. And I know people who have um, pug mills and they still wedge their clay pretty thoroughly, which I think you should. Um, but I don't have a pug mill. I just have a cheap plaster bat that I've had since college. <laughs> and oh my gosh, I've been out of college for over a decade. So this plaster bat has been through it. It has been through how many moves? I think I moved like five times or something. It's been through all those moves, so that plaster bat is still kicking it. Anyway, 
So right now I'm just trying to uh, shape the clay body. Oh, and this is what I did. Okay, so I took my wooden tool and I tried to cut off the rim to make it a bit more stable. And look at that. See, isn't that cool? I love the way that that trick is. It's not like it's correcting the clay. It's just making it easier and making the lip level. So you're still going to have issues when you trim. You're still going to notice that there is a wobble at the bottom, but it will sit on the clay. Like, so with trimming, you take it after you take it off the wheel head, you flip it over and then you trim. Um, and when it's trimmed, it's best to have uh, the rim to be pretty level. So what I just did at that time, at that moment with another tool is called a scraper tool. I totally forgot to put it into the materials, but sorry about that. Um, the materials intro, but that's a scraper tool and it just scrapes the outside of the clay to make it clean. And right now I'm using something called a calipers and a calipers measures the diameter of the mug. And so you need those calipers because once you make the lid, the diameter needs to be the same. So just keep that in mind. Some people don't even use calipers. Some people just um, use a stick. <laughs> but I have calipers because I'm not that nifty to use a stick. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just cleaning up the bottom of the clay so that I can take it off the wheel. All right, now we're into part two. So now what I am doing <laughs> is that I am centering the lidded form. And this part um, isn't as hectic as the first one. I think it's because I'm not using as much clay as I, as I was with the cup form but still you still kind of have to compress and make sure and then I realized because I took off that chunk of clay off of the top of the the chunk of clay that was the cup if that makes sense um so I knew that there was issues with um air bubbles so I was just trying to be proactive and um cone which is um bringing up the clay body on the wheel cone it more so that I can kind of compress those air bubbles more. And so I tried my best to do that and see how it was. And I do have to say, after throwing this piece, because I took the time to cone more, I was pretty happy with the way everything turned out. Um, so yeah, I think clay is so fascinating to me. It's like you get on the pottery wheel and some days it's like, oh, today's a great throwing day. And so you want to throw all day. And then you have some days where you're like, oh, that's just not going well for me. And of course, it's not its not like it's the clay, it's you. It's like you are having issues with throwing. But <laughs> I remember I used to always say, oh, it's just not a good throwing day for me. Um, and then sometimes maybe your head just isn't in the game. So I mean, anyway, anyway, so now I'm bringing up the clay walls. I do have a wobble, um, which is not surprising. <laughs> but I'm trying to compress and make sure everything is working out. Um, I'm also trying to create an interesting shape at the bottom, trying to create that interesting mushroom shape. And I want it like uh, a tall mushroom. You know how like you have some mushroom caps that kind of flange out a little bit. I kind of want it the pretty little boop ones that are kind of like boop. Not really the ones that are like... Um, like um, shiitake mushrooms or something like that. I guess this one's more like the Mario, Super Mario Brother mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> so now I am cutting off the rim. Again, because the rim wasn't level. <laughs> and it does make it easier. Look how much easier it is now. Oh. It's like all smooth. It's like a magic trick, you know? And it does take a little getting used to being able to cut off the rim in such a way where um, it doesn't mess up the form. 
and it's way easier to do with a needle tool but I didn't have a needle tool with me and I didn't feel like getting up to get one so I just weighed my options and I was like well we'll just see how this works and it worked <laughs> now I'm bending the wall a little bit so what I'm trying to do is create a lip so that the are a flange a flange so that the lid would sit on the lip of the cup if that makes sense um, there's a really cool picture I'll insert now that shows what the lip how the cup or how the lid will fit on the cup And so having that, and hopefully you looked at that, that um, is a great reference to show you different types of ways that you can make lids. And lidded forms are really fun to make. They're very fun to make. So I took the caliper, making sure that everything kind of fit and measured the way it, it should. And then I cut a little bit from under the, the clay. And obviously, as you saw, it did throw it off center, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, I usually go back to make sure that it's, it hasn't changed as much. And so, see, going back. And I also use the other side of the caliper to make sure that it will fit the cup. So, yeah. So, that's me checking the cup right now to make sure everything fits well. I can't turn, I was going to turn the camera to show you, but. It would get clay everywhere. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know if you learned something new.